Every day I wake up knowing that the more people I try to save, the more enemies I will make. There is something universal about the Spider-Man character. When you walk around, whether it's New York or China or Australia, everybody knows who Spider-Man is. Need a hand? The beauty of Spider-Man, he's owning the symbol and he's making it more that open, warm protector that kids feel reassured and excited by. Andrew, he can do it all. He can have the humor, he can have the conflict, he can do stunts that most people don't. You know what it is I love about being Spider-Man? Everything. And with the origin story done with in the earlier film. Thank it God. Like, <laughs> it feels like this time Peter Parker really has learned to own and embrace his dual identity, that of Spider-Man. Yeah. And enjoy it as well. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. That's the that's the only job we have sure. in this life is to be who we are mm. and be who we're supposed to be and accept it. And I think there's something so liberating in in that as an actor sure. and as Peter and as Spider-Man is that you get to just pff, say, I don't care what anybody else is saying. Right. I'm just going to be who I am. You know, that's a cool place to be. And, and it's inspiring for young people, I think, mm. you know. I mean, that's a, that this, for me, one of the metaphors of this story right. for young people's lives is, you know, we're not, we're not all going to be bitten by a spider. Sure. But, um... We will be bitten by something. Right. We'll be bitten by a bug for acting, or a bug mm. for journalism, or mm. a bug for art, or science, or whatever. And when you get bitten, you have to just follow what that is trying to tell you. Right. What's it like returning to play a character that you've played before? Is it sort of easy and comfortable, or is it more challenging? Um, and is there more pressure because you have to sort of convey a growth since the last time we saw it? Yeah, I think um, I loved coming back because I do feel like on the first movie we were given a lot of uh, obstacles to overcome. Mm. And um, I feel like we did as, as well as we could. And, 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 and I think coming back to this role with this freedom we're talking about mm. is... Um, and with and with everyone feeling it, with everyone on set feeling, and also, you know, we we were forming relationships in that first movie between the actors, between the filmmakers. So, coming back, we know each other a lot better and deeper, and we're dancing in a more flowing kind of way. So right. it's fun. It's been ten years. What have you been up to? I do some web design. You know, what I thought was interesting about this film is that while you don't skimp on the action mm -hmm. and the spectacle of it, it's really the love story between these two people. Yeah. And then it's not really a love story between two people. It almost seems like there's a third cog in the... There's someone in the way. There is, isn't it? Yes, 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 yes. But, um, yeah, that's an interesting thing. It's a really interesting thing. I think people who have that higher calling, mm. um, you have to have sacri make sacrifices for the greater good of the greater amount of people. Um, when you're of service, when you're when you're in the service industry, as uh, Spider-Man has to be, right. um, it gets in the way of your own personal needs, and that's tough for a teenager, let alone you know, a person. Where are you? First in Broadway, second in Broadway, third in Broadway. Uh, five minutes, ten tops. Are there sirens? No. What is happening? So I'll be right there. Very young Trump. <laughs> You've compared Spider-Man's approach to action with Bugs Bunny's approach. Yeah. You've said it's the trickster element. You do tell us. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think uh, that's what sets him apart from other superheroes, and that's what we were talking about earlier. Like he's being himself. He's right. doing it. What's his style? You know what I mean? Like, what is the Spider-Man style of doing things? And for me, I drew a lot of inspiration from you know Bugs Bunny and cartoon characters and that 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 trickster bent arrow. You know. I don't like throwing punches and throwing okay. kicks. I, it's not that interesting to me. What's interesting to me is letting uh, letting the weaknesses of your opponents um, defeat themselves. So you were a gymnast when you were younger. Yes. so that must have helped. Yeah, yeah, it did. I used to love it when it, when I wasn't doing competitions. I used to really love doing the flips and the cartwheels and the vault and the rings and the bars and all that. But as soon as I got into competition, I didn't really enjoy it anymore. Um, so it's really nice being able to just apply the fun of it to this character. I made a choice. This is my path. This is 
bigger than Jupiter. I'm the only one who can stop them. I'm Spider-Man. movie does and not a lot of blockbuster movies do is it gives the girlfriend character opportunity to exist and independence to exist outside of just that relationship. Yeah. Gwen Stacy therefore is not defined just by the fact that she's Peter Parker's girlfriend. Right. Was that refreshing? Absolutely, yeah. That's a huge draw to play the character um, because that's reality. Right. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's, she, she definitely has her own path carved out and her own ambitions and her own heroic impulses and yeah that's that's a huge reason why I wanted to play her is Peter no he's doing whatever it is he does right yeah I have to go to England here it's important to me Spider-Man women in superhero movies and they seem to exist only to be rescued. Right. The truth is in this movie, Gwen Stacy rescues Peter Parker more than once herself, doesn't she? Mm -hmm. She's sort of the brains to his muscle. Right, yes, that's a, very well put. Uh, she is. She is. She's an incredibly intelligent girl. She's a very willful girl. She gets herself involved. She really wants to help him. Uh, probably too much sometimes. Right. Uh, but she, yeah, she, she's, she's a, she's a very intelligent girl who is, uh, is beneficial to, to Peter in, in many ways. I'm so sorry, I'm late. I had a traffic thing. Did your traffic jam have anything to do with being, I don't know, shot at by machine guns? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was implying. That was implying that. <laughs> Coming with you. Okay, you okay, know okay, that you okay, need okay. me. Come okay. okay. with me. Shut the thing. Sorry, I love you. Don't hate me. Peter. Emma, do you feel more confident going in to play a character for the second time round, or is that pressure because you have to convey that she's grown since we last met her? Well, that no. I mean, I, I think it was. I was excited. I was excited to come back and to play her again because she has evolved in such a, a major way right. since the first movie. So. Um, it was nice. It was nice to know that that backstory is seen and people understand what she's been through. You don't have to convey that she just lost her father. You're right. aware that she lost her father and why her awareness of mortality might be clearer or why she might have matured in such a major way in the sure. past nine months or a year or however mm -hmm. long it's been in the movie. Um, so, so yeah, no, it was, it was good. Okay. What I thought was interesting about this film is that it doesn't skimp on the action and the spectacle aspect of the movie, yeah. uh, but still it really gives you this beautiful love story, this complicated love story between these two kids. Yeah. And then it's not really a love story between two people. It almost feels like there's Spider-Man who's sort of the third wheel in this relationship. Does, that, does it feel like that to you when you're making this movie or reading the script? Um, I mean, yeah, because Spider-Man does take over sure. Peter. Uh, throughout their dates and things like that. Um, yeah, but I think that Peter and Spider-Man are so kind of symbiotic now. Right. They don't really, you can't have one without the other anymore. Right. So it's just sort of the reality of the, of the way it goes now for them. Sure. The interesting thing about Gwen Stacy is that she loves Peter Parker more, whereas Mary Jane Watson was clearly in love with Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And also Gwen is his first love, so there's that kind of you know, that kind of thing that comes with your first love where you just, they always sit in a really deep place in your, in your heart and soul. All right, Ed, let's go! Having established the origin story in the previous film, mm -hmm. this is the film that we really see Peter Parker embrace his dual identity and even have mm -hmm. fun with it, don't we? Yeah. 
Minimal angst? Was that the brief then? Minimal angst. Well, we wanted to embrace the humor. Sure. You know, when I was a, a kid and reading the Spider-Man comic books, I didn't start at the beginning. You know, I started right. sort of in the middle. Sure. And I just thought of Peter Parker and Spider-Man in particular as a funny, entertaining, uh, colorful character. Right. And so I really wanted to start with that idea. Mm -hmm. I really wanted to embrace with that, that idea. Of course, there's always massive tension and drama that comes from him trying to keep his life as Peter Parker right. separate from his life as Spider-Man. And that's going to collide in this movie in a very deep and, and, and significant way. What? what? What are you doing? What am I doing? I'm doing my laundry. laundry. I, last time you did it, you turned everything blue and red. I was washing the, 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 the American flag, my, my flag. No one washes a flag. All right, laundry sheriff. Watch out. Oh, boy. <laughs> You're that spider guy. Up by the bed. Huh? Up uh, <sighs> by the bed. I feel like anyone who's been a fan of yours from the 500 Days of Summer film will really enjoy and appreciate the romantic comedy aspect of this film mm -hmm. because it sort of it sort of harks back to what you did mm -hmm. that time, didn't it? Yeah, I think so. I mean, there there is a. You know, fortunately for me, I'm working with some of the, the, the best young actors that are out sure. there. Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone are, uh, can play romance very well, but they're also incredibly funny. And I think mm. you get to see that part of the, the movie. I mean, there right. is, a, there is a, at the beginning of the film, you know, you sense the, the, the drama there. You sense the, the yearning that's there, but they're also very funny. Sure. And that's what puts them at ease with each other. And they, they, there's that scene in, in Union Square where uh, they're just, you know, they're playing. Right. And that playfulness is something that, that it's how we fall in love. Sure. And, and I think there's something really wonderful about that that gives the, 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 the big movie a small beating heart. This is the most cliched hiding place you could have chosen. This oh, is, I'm this sorry. is the stupidest hiding didn't place. Take us to the Bahamas of listen, hiding places. Listen. Just kiss me. Right. How'd you like it? I felt a little bit rushed. I know. This is the plan. You get the elevator. I'm gonna distract them, okay? Okay. Oh, God! Absol. I just spilled a hot latte all over your body. I didn't know that. Oh, no. And you too. Oh, oh, stay stay right there. there. Wait, wait, wait. Hey! Alright, I'm sorry, I'm all thumbs today. Mark, did you feel more comfortable going into the second film mm. or was there more pressure because records have to be broken? Uh, <laughs> well, you know, actually the first time around there was a, an enormous amount of pressure and we all felt that on our shoulders and people were kind of, I think, skeptical of why we were making a Spider-Man movie so quickly and then the world embraced it and, and, and people in India seemed to embrace it in particular, mm -hmm. which was really uh, a wonderful thing for us. And, and then... Um, you know, this time around, we just had a good time. Sure. And I, I knew what Andrew and Emma's strengths were, and I knew about visual effects. I knew how, about this universe. So right. I think I felt more uh, willing to take risks and more willing to embrace the spectacle of it. Sure. The, the, you know, Spider-Man has to be entertaining. We were spending our hard-earned money on, on, on this uh, experience. We want it to be fun. We want it to be fulfilling. Right. And that was uh, uh, something that I really wanted to address this time around. And you lay the groundwork for the Sinister Six yeah. spin-off. Yeah, of course. You know, that's, that's really important for us. There is, there's so much in the Spider-Man, you know, 50 years of comics. Right. You know what I mean? There's so much fun things there that are incredibly cinematic that thanks to the, to, to the technology nowadays sure. and to the enthusiasm of the audience and the studio, uh, it allows us to sort of indulge in those different parts of the, of the mythos. It must be pretty cool to have the whole world see you like this. Amazing Spider-Man. I read somewhere, Jamie, that your four-year-old daughter is a big fan of yes. Spider-Man. Yes, she loves Spider-Man, but she loves Daddy, too, you okay. know, and Daddy's going to pay for college. Right. So understand this. 